right, so I'm currently on the phone with Marissa and Angelica. Uh, they're another set of musicians that reached out to me about the interview series. So I'm going to go ahead and give them the opportunity to introduce themselves. Okay, well, we are Marissa and Angelica from the Cheesebergens. Um, Angelica. Hi, my name is Angelica, and I play guitar and sing along with my brother, Jesse, who isn't here right now. Yeah, Jesse also plays guitar and sings. They, they're they both lead singers and guitarists for the band. Um, and we are a family band. So Angelica and Jesse are my children. Jesse's a boy, by the way. <laughs> and uh, I'm the mom. Oh, sorry. Yeah, she said it was a brother. Okay. And uh, I'm the mom and bass player. And I write most of the songs. And my husband writes, uh, I'm sorry, my husband plays drums. Awesome. His name's so I. So you guys are the first like family band that I've interviewed. So I'm very curious about, you know, how you guys got started and like what the most motivation was for it. So Marissa, let's start with you. How did you first identify with music and what about it was really important to you enough to want to create the family band dynamic? Um, well, I, I got, I just grew up with music, you know, um, my mother gave me her old Beatles albums when I was a kid and my father was a musician, so I don't know. I guess it was in my blood, but as soon as I you know, was a teenager, I started playing, you know, and then I was in my own band with my sister for, for a while. And then, um, you know, we, uh, you know, broke up eventually, and I took some time off when I had the kids. But um, then they started, I, we started getting them into music. We sent them to rock schools mm -hmm. and um, they were doing, you know, a lot of covers, which is what they do. They teach in rock schools. And I thought they should start playing original music. Um, so, I mean, my son was about 12 at this time. So I started, I wanted to get him a band and we, you know, he started jamming with some kids, but it didn't really work out. So we just decided to do our family band. And, you know, that's, that's it. <laughs> Sure. And so, Angelica, what's it like for you kind of, you know, being this uh, second generation uh, family band member? Um, <laughs> uh, it's it's cool. It's, you know, it's cool to be like doing music and doing it with your family can be kind of weird sometimes. Mm -hmm. But like, for the most part, it's really cool. And you also like, for the most part, understand each other. And it kind of gives you this level of like connection that I think like some bands, it feels mean to say that some bands lack, but it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of true. Uh, but yeah, I think there's kind of that whole dynamic that, you know, you can pick your friends, but you can't pick your family. So if like you're in the family band, you're kind of, you know, stuck with the members that you have. Yeah, <laughs> basically. Awesome. So um, in, in addition to, you know, furthering the family band project and everything, do you guys kind of look outside of that to also contribute to the uh, grander music uh, like industry, whether it be, you know, working with other musicians or kind of uh, promoting yourselves individually? Uh, well, I actually have a. Um, uh, well, OK, so so funny enough, my son kind of part two to what I was saying before is that my son eventually did get a band together. So he's mm -hmm. in a metal band called Diabology. And mm -hmm. they're all still, you know, teenagers. So I started helping them out getting gigs because I mean, it's hard if you, you know, you have to kind of find all age shows mm -hmm. and you know, not, not every venue will book teenagers. So I started kind of getting shows together for them and also for our band because we have minors in the band too that that can play like a lot of 21 plus clubs so i started uh, my own production company because so many of the venues were you know like that we could play were pizza places and rec centers mm -hmm. where it's kind of like we had to get our own bill together mm -hmm. so i started getting so many bills together that i was just like let me make this official so um, yeah, so I have my own production companies called Yo Mama Productions, and I and I specialize in all age shows. Yeah, mm -hmm. appropriately called, and uh, and then like he does his band Diabology, and then you know I don't know Angelica is kind of actually into acting more. You know, like that's what she, that's like her own. You know, she doesn't really do music on her own time outside of the band. She she acts more. Okay, so, but in some capacity, you're all kind of looking out uh, into the entertainment industry at large and trying to, you know, find footing. Except for 
for my husband. <laughs> he just kind of <laughs> likes to sit on the couch. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so along those lines, um, what was it like kind of once you realized that you had to start your own production company because of the types of venues that you knew you'd have to play in? So I'm sorry. So what was it like? Yeah. So uh, the kind of beyond the motivation of being able to book, uh, you know, venues for uh, your band and also your son's band. Um, was there any larger motivation there to like expand the production company to uh I, I don't want to say a regular promotional venue type thing, but I guess that's what I mean. I mean, you know, it, honestly, to tell you the truth, like to me, if it, like I get my satisfaction is, you know, if, if if I'm not if either I'm not getting to play or my son's not getting to play, it's kind of not worth it to me. Mm. And, and I'll be honest, I, I I I do enjoy helping the other bands. I really do. I like I I, I you know. They, they're grateful and, and I, and I love being able to help them, but it's, it's such hard work and, you know, you really don't get a lot of money off of it. Like, I, I don't think I've, I, I've definitely spent more money than I've, you know, that I've made. And, um, and it's hard to deal with the bands. You get a lot of cancellations, you know, like just, so like, if I'm, if I'm not getting anything out of it, it's, it just would not be worth it. Sure, definitely. And that makes sense. And that's, you know, pretty common for any any musician on like the street level and getting started uh, platform. Um, so how do you guys kind of approach writing and developing like new material? And are you guys uh, working on like uh, releases, putting album together, trying to get that published? Um, so um, I'm Angelica, you go ahead. She's I'm talking the conversation. Uh, well, our writing process for songs is mainly she writes things, goes, hey, look, I wrote this thing. And the rest of us go, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> and we learn it. And then we work to, like, you know, make it into a full song. Mm -hmm. uh, and as for, like, but, yeah, like, we kind of all, like, for, hey. so most of us bring things to it. And by most of us, I mean mainly her. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and as for, like, releases um we've been releasing uh like singles mm -hmm. yeah so so what we did do during quarantine is we is we basically recorded every song that we had written and we've been putting them out like as singles as like two song singles once mm -hmm. a month and uh, and then when they're all done we're going to put them all out as a double album <laughs> sure that's awesome and that's definitely a viable way to do it these days you know you find more and more bands that are doing like the monthly releases rather than you know the the lp one, once every couple of years kind of thing yeah yeah awesome so uh down the line where where would you like to see uh the family band get to and continue to grow like what's what i, I don't want to say end goal so what is the overall ambition <laughs> well you know i i kind of I, you know i don't know it's it's hard for me to say because i mean right now like Je my son is 19 and angelica is 14 and they're kind of like getting their own you know it's their own lives and mm. so it's kind of hard to you know it's getting harder to like find time to do the cheeseburgers and I kind of anticipated that when it started mm -hmm. but I I always see you know I don't I don't think that we'll ever like truly break up um we've been doing a live stream which is kind mm. of like an easy you know it's kind of like an easy alternative to playing live because it's not as exciting. Mm. I mean, we, I like to keep doing live gigs, but it's kind of just easy because we can all get together in the house and just turn on the camera and have fun. So I see that as like an ongoing thing. And, you know, I mean, continuing to record and playing out when we can, you know. Sure, definitely. And that's a that's kind of a really exciting family dynamic, too. Uh, not a lot of uh, musicians in general have that dynamic. So that's kind of a, a wholesome family activity. Yeah, tell awesome. <laughs> we're kind of like surprisingly. Well, I don't know. We're a little bit. I, I don't know. I'd like to say we're a little bit edgy for a family fan, but <laughs> well, even even still, uh, you know, you still fall under the criteria of like the nuclear family. What you what you do in your own time is what makes the family, rather than you know fitting into any sort of societal structure. Sure. Yeah, that's true. Awesome. So uh, why don't each of you kind of uh, tell me, you know, 
a, a couple of your favorite memories about working in music and uh, you know how it's inspired to you or impacted you? <laughs> a memorable moment in music. <laughs> oh God, I don't know. Um, one time we were playing a show and they started wheeling a woman out on the stretcher, <laughs> and we just kept playing because they told us we could. And I think about that pretty often. Sure. Yeah, that was like kind of one of our funnier band moments. <laughs> like we were playing this show and they also I don't I don't know what I mean. The woman wasn't very sick, but <laughs> the paramedics came in and started taking her out on a stretcher. And we were like, should we stop? And everyone was like, no, no, keep playing. And, you know, we have like these kind of cute, funny songs. And she was like getting wheeled out on a stretcher. And it was like, um, okay. So, so that, I mean, that's definitely like a, a memory. For sure. That's a unique experience. Not many people yeah. can, you know, say their music put somebody in the hospital. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But like for how music like all around has impacted me, it's kind of, it was, it's been like my intro to like, I guess we're calling it the entertainment industry, be, mm -hmm. right? It always, like, you know, being on stage and mm -hmm. performing for others. It was like my introduction to that. And it's also like just fueled a lot of my like passion for a lot of things like mm -hmm. being um, on stage, and yeah, acting. Like acting, being on stage, even like. I don't do art very often, but you know, it's when I do, it's kind of like music helps me like come up with ideas for it. I listen mm -hmm. to music while like writing things or it's, it's always just like sort of there to like give me inspiration and like help me basically. Sure. Sure. So in a metaphorical sense, you could say that it's like the wallpaper in your house kind of thing where it's always there. You can always have it. But, you know, it, it's not a, exactly always the focus. Yeah, <laughs> at least for me. <laughs> okay, cool. Oh, should I, should I elaborate? Or um, I thought you were going to like, you're my yeah, like, yeah. Well, I don't know, the woman getting, uh, you know, throw, you know, wheeled out on a stretcher is a, is a top one. Okay. You know? Um, um, sure. I mean, I, I don't mean to press you guys. Uh, sometimes it's hard to draw out memories, definitely on the spot when you're called out like that. Um, so what are your guys' social medias? Where can people actually check out uh, what you're doing and take a listen to you guys? We're everywhere. The, the, the trick is, what I tell people is the trick is knowing how to spell our, our name because it's, it's cheese, obviously, and then Bergen's is B-E-R-G-E-N and S at the end uh, with the band. So if you search that up, you'll find us everywhere. I mean, we're on Instagram, Facebook, um, Twitter, Spotify, you know, like as far as our, the, the music streaming platforms, you know, Apple Music, you know, it, we're, we're just everywhere. So if you search us up with the correct spelling of our name, you will find us. We also do our live stream. We we used to do it every Friday night, but it's it's getting more sporadic, like I told you, like because, well, now that everything's opened up again, it was pandemic inspired, but now that, you know, everything's opened up again, every, everyone's going every which way. So we try to do it on Friday nights at seven o'clock PST as much as possible. Um, but you know, it's, it's, it's sporadic. Okay, sure. Um, so I like to give the people that I'm interviewing the opportunity to put their last word out at the end of the interview. So just a message that you kind of feel resonates with you and why don't you each take a turn? Oh my goodness. Wow. Can we do it about each other? <laughs> we won't be sure. talking the rest of the Yeah, day. absolutely. No. Um, Shirley. No. <laughs> I thought it was just like a general thing. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, so, go ahead. I just... um, <laughs> God, I don't know. Well, like, um, don't be a dick and don't let anyone tell you that what you're doing is like weird or wrong or you shouldn't be doing it because if you like doing it that's the only thing that matters like fuck everyone else man if you're happy that's is she allowed that's to good. say that <laughs> oh, yeah. mother say sure. that? that's fine okay well that was a good message now how am i gonna top that <laughs> i don't know wow eat lots of chocolate <laughs> Eat, eat lots of chocolate and listen to listen to rock and roll music. 